Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. Scientists discover a strange glacier that releases a red liquid, and local animals and insects start mutating. Today we will recap the story of the 2013 movie, Blood Gletcher. In 2013, the world faces terrifying climate disasters. Experts predict that the North Pole will be ice-free within 10 years and the Alpine glaciers will disappear completely. Life will never be the same again, and people are contributing to it. In the Austrian Alps, at an altitude of three and a half thousand meters is the Glacius Research Station. Currently an alcoholic technician named Yannick, his dog named Tini, and three scientists who monitor climate change live there. Yannick wakes up to a loud noise after another massive hangover. Birtha, one of the scientists persistently knocks on his door and asks for help. Reluctantly, the technician arrives at the main base and disables the alarm. It turns out that one of the weather stations, located a few hundred meters from the main base, is out of order. Without it, scientists can't track climatic air readings and it needs to be repaired urgently. Yannick does not particularly get along with the team and tries to keep apart from them, but is obliged to obey their orders. Once outside, the technician notices that his dog Tini is acting strangely and does not respond to his master's call to go eat. It stares incessantly at a single point overhead, as if it has seen something among the snow-covered mountains. Later, Yannick and researcher Falk finish the last preparations to go up into the mountains and fix a malfunction at the station. Falk tries to find out more about the personality of the unfriendly technician. He has spent more than five years in isolation at the station, though few can endure such harsh conditions. Yannick is not ready to give the real reason for his confinement in the mountains and says he knows the station and the terrain around him better than anyone else. The men and the dog climb high into the mountains, traversing the bumpy slopes. Suddenly, Tini jumps out of her seat and runs off in an unknown direction, barking. Yannick and the scientist follow the pet and they discover an incredible sight. One of the rocks is covered with a bacterial plaque of a red hue. Falk is thrilled by the unusual find and decides to take samples for further investigation. Yannick hears a muffled howl coming from the cave. He pays no attention to it and continues to repair the transformer box. Curious Tini, on the other hand, decides to check what is going on in the cave. She runs inside and finds the source of the howling by smell. Among the rocks lies a badly wounded fox, breathing very heavily. Something is actively moving in its womb and suddenly bursts out. A desperate dog barking resounds in the cave and Yannick bangs his head on the transformer box in surprise, and Falk runs off the slope. The technician runs to his pet and finds a fresh wound on his stomach. The dog looks ahead, where the fox's twisted body lies. Disturbing noises are heard inside the cave and Yannick decides to pick up his pet and leave the cave rather than go to the source of the noise. Back at the main base, scientists examine samples of the unusual glacier under a microscope. They discover a living organism in it, whose cells are constantly dividing and multiplying. Birtha demands that Yannick take her to the glacier to take fresh samples and place them in an airtight container. The technician refuses to go up into the mountains at night, given that there is a rabid fox roaming the cave. The scientists are unhappy with Yannick's behavior and believe that he is just imagining things after drinking too much and that there is no danger in the cave. Nevertheless, they decide to postpone the trip to the glacier to the next day. In the morning, the Minister of Ecology Bodasek is supposed to come to the station with a committee, and the scientists propose to keep the unusual discovery a secret. Yannick does not agree, as he is obliged to alert the higher authorities about what has happened. The arriving minister is accompanied by reporters and Yannick's ex-girlfriend named Tanya. She works as a geologist and three years ago was part of a group of scientists working at the station in the Alps. Meanwhile, the scientists are trying to talk the technician out of telling guests about what they saw in the cave. This is just a PR campaign for the minister and they all have to play their part in this political spectacle. Harold gives Yannick a dose of morphine so that he will fall asleep and not disturb them. At that moment, however, Tanya contacts him by radio and informs him of her arrival. This event immediately soothes the technician and the scientists worry that he will reveal information about the rabid fox to his ex-girlfriend. Tanya informs Yannick that she is going with the minister and reporters to the mountains at dawn to take colorful pictures. The man is excited to meet his former lover and takes more morphine to pass out. Waking up in the middle of the night, Yannick hears someone digging in the garbage. Sensing something wrong, he calls up Harold on the radio and asks him to bring him a rifle, but his companion does not hear him. Suddenly, a hideous-looking monster emerges from hiding and terrifies the technician. The scientists rush out to the sound and Yannick tells them to hurry and hide. He reports that he has seen some kind of hybrid fox with horns on its head. The scientists do not take the man's strange behavior seriously, believing that he is under the harmful effects of morphine and alcohol. Yannick is sure that he is right and wants to report everything to the authorities immediately. A small fight breaks out between the scientists and the technician. Having calmed down, Harold tries to persuade Yannick to go to bed and postpone the capture of the mythical fox to the next day. The distraught technician takes his wounded dog and retreats to his cabin. Before falling asleep, Yannick tells Harold a story about a hunter who once lived nearby. When he died, the badly wounded Tini was lying next to his body. Tanya and the technician took the dog in, 
after which they nurtured and fattened him up. All night long, Yannick has nightmares about the monster. In the morning, he calls Tanya by radio and warns her of the danger that awaits them along their route. The girl does not believe her ex-boyfriend's delusions and tells the crew to get ready for ascent. Yannick decides to accompany Britta to the Red Glacier. Once there, however, they discover that the red bacterial growth has disappeared somewhere. The scientist decides to drill into the block to collect materials, and Yannick steps aside to go to the bathroom. Suddenly, one of the rocks starts to move due to the moisture. The stone turns out to be a mutant beetle, which attacks whoever disturbed it. A dazed Yannick kicks the beetle and it bounces aside, hiding in its shell again. Meanwhile, the minister and the group are walking the trail to the station. Tanya enthusiastically tells reporters about climate change research. The group stops on a scenic slope to take some pictures. During the photo shoot, the photographer is bitten by a giant mosquito whose belly is filled with the harmful bacteria. Back at the base, the scientists dissect the mutant bug. The creature moves sharply, causing a commotion among those present. But Birtha calls it a vegetative reaction. After taking the biomaterials for analysis, the scientists conclude that it contains the same microorganisms as the Red Glacier. Birtha concludes that the monster found is some sort of hybrid of flea and fox. This bacterium can recombine and mix the DNA of different organisms, thereby creating a variety of infected animal hybrids. When the Red Glacier melted, the frozen microorganisms got into the fox along with the glacial water. The fox's genes then mixed with the genes of the bugs it ate, creating a hybrid. Yannick wonders what would happen if an animal infected with the harmful microorganisms were to bite or lick a human wound. Britta suggests that such an animal would spawn something like a werewolf, a human with the head of a jackal. The technician returns to his den and examines Teeny's wound, inside which something is beginning to grow. The man once again contacts Tanya and tries to persuade her to change her route and not to go through the pass, which runs just through the infected area. After finishing his conversation, the man is faced with a hard choice. He realizes that his beloved dog is infected and an agonizing death lies ahead. He must shoot Teeny and put him out of his misery, but he hesitates to do so. The dog looks at his master with pitying eyes, which adds to his indecision. Tanya decides to take her former lover's advice and suggests that the group change the route. The minister agrees to take a shorter route and Tanya informs Yannick of this. Through the radio, the girl hears Teeny whining in the background and begs Yannick to wait for her so they can find another way out together. The man is happy to postpone the execution of his beloved pet. Meanwhile, the mosquito-bitten photographer is feeling worse, but he chalks it up to fatigue. Not far from the minister's group, a frightened girl is being chased by a mutant eagle. The tourist stumbles on a rock and falls. The hybrid catches up with the girl and pierces her leg with its enormous stinger. Yannick is about to head out to meet Tanya and the others, which causes a new wave of discontent among the scientists. They do not want the technician to tell the minister about the new bacterial menace, as the news could cause panic and unnecessary publicity. Scientists believe that they are on the verge of the greatest scientific discovery that will change the whole world. They ask Yannick to buy them some time so they can do all the necessary research. The stern technician defies persuasion, which infuriates Birtha. Yannick makes it clear that he is not afraid of the scientist's threats and sets off. On his way he finds the body of a mountain goat with an exploded stomach. The man looks around warily, realizing that the hybrids are getting closer and closer to the station. The bitten photographer begins to develop a severe fever and the group decides to pause. The bite on his neck swells and pulsates. Tanya wants to get the group to the station as quickly as possible. Therefore she tells them to keep moving. Suddenly the injured hiker, who miraculously managed to fight off the flying mutant, runs out to them. The girl falls to the ground and cannot utter a word due to panic attacks. Now the hybrid eagle begins circling over the group, looking for its next victim. The minister's guard immediately rushes to defend the minister and tries to shoot the raptor, but the bird disappears behind the high slopes. But the lull proved to be temporary and a few seconds later the mutant attacks the guard. Although the man manages to fight off the bird, it mortally wounds him. A real panic ensues among the delegation. Minister Bodasek, in tears, crawls up to the dead security guard, with whom she was close. The photographer, who has been bitten, flees to the mountains. Yannick rushes to their aid and escorts the remaining group to the station. At this time, Harold rehearses a meeting with high-ranking guests, but he fails to put his charms into practice. The terrified delegation bursts into the station and immediately barricades themselves inside. They place the wounded tourist on a table and treat her wounds with improvised means. Not everyone makes it to the station. Irene, one of the reporters, notices that her partner is lost in panics. The minister stiffly brings her to her senses and reassures her that the man will be back soon. Tanya asks Yannick to call someone for help, but the only satellite phone has been taken by two scientists who have gone to the weather station. Harold whispers to the technician that Falk and Britta do not plan to return until the morning when the minister's delegation leaves. Seeing the unfortunate consequences of his actions, 
The scientist tries to awkwardly justify himself. Yannick does not find his apology convincing and slaps the man for putting their lives in mortal danger. The minister offers to call for help using her phone, but at this altitude, mobile communication does not work. The woman remembers that her dead security guard had another satellite phone and takes her anger out on the sobbing reporter. Yannick hears his pet barking and is terrified of the danger that is just around the corner. He bursts out into the street and cautiously walks toward his cabin, expecting to see the worst. An enraged Tanya interrogates Harold about the discovery the scientists withheld from them. Falk and Britta make it to the weather station, but discover that they forgot the key to it at the main base. The scientists blame each other for what happened for a while, after which Falk picks the lock. They go inside and Britta, in anticipation, opens the container with the mutant bug they took with them for research. However, the hybrid has only been pretending to be dead all along and immediately lunges at the scientist's face as soon as she opens the container. The woman runs out into the street in a panic, trying to unhook the mutant from herself. Her partner tries to help her, but comes up with nothing better to do than hit her several times over the head with a rock. The mutant bug does peel away from the woman, but after the blows, her face is now completely squashed. Yannick goes to his suffering pet and tries to calm him down. Tanya, who has already heard from Harold about the mutants, enters the house. Tiny reaches out to her mistress, recognizing her, which Yannick does not like. Tanya has already disappeared once, leaving them all alone. The man shows his ex-girlfriend the dog's belly, in which something is actively moving. Tanya understands without words what needs to be done. She hands Yannick a syringe with a lethal injection to put the hopelessly ill dog to sleep. The man finally decides to help his four-legged friend and puts him out of his misery. The couple is having a hard time dealing with the death of their mutual pet. Tanya decides to confess to her ex-boyfriend that she was pregnant by him. But as soon as a ray of hope appears in Yannick's eyes, the girl reports that the baby did not survive either. The minister is extremely unhappy that the scientists did not inform her of the danger. Harold continues to make pathetic excuses and suggests that the mutant eagle that attacked the delegation was just an accident. The woman then loses her temper altogether and beats the scientist. Yannick and Tanya return to the station. The technician plans to go in search of the two scientists to take the satellite phone from them. Tanya tries to stop him from the dangerous venture, but he is determined. Suddenly a frightened Falk, who managed to get to the station alive, bursts in. With frightened eyes, he begs to barricade the door, through which a hybrid of a mountain goat and an insect is trying to break in. Yannick manages to briefly chase the insect away and latch the door shut. The technician asks Falk about the satellite phone and Britta. The scientist says that his partner has the phone, but he does not admit what he has done. He lies that the woman fled into the mountains after seeing a mutant. The monster continues his persistent attempts to ram the doors, terrifying everyone gathered. The mutant is unusually strong, his powerful blows shake the station like a house of cards. Minister Bodicek screams hysterically at the beast, hoping to frighten it away. For a moment, the goat does quieten down. Soon it returns with its mutant friend, the eagle. The creatures burst inside and Yannick tries to stop them with his bare hands. The minister comes to his aid and drills a hole in the mutant goat's head with a drill. The others hold their breath as they watch and breathe out in relief when the lady wins the battle. The entire company comes to their senses and recovers from the shock they've been through. Harold has a monologue with himself, speaking pathologically about his suffering. The minister learns from Tanya that the helicopter that is supposed to take the delegation back will not arrive until noon the next day. But the rescue team does not know that the group is at the research station and that their search could take several more hours. One member of the delegation rightly observes that the rescue team does not know what awaits them in the mountains. They are used to rescuing lost climbers and will not be able to confront mutants without weapons. In addition, the infected hiker may not make it to morning and they need a satellite phone to save her. Tanya and Yannick are summoned to go to the weather station. The technician forces Falk to go with them, not believing his story about Britta's escape. The others barricade themselves at the base, where the eagle-wounded tourist briefly regains consciousness. Lifting the blanket, the gathered notice a strange movement under the skin of her leg. Harold suggests that the girl is also infected and a mutant is growing inside her right now. Everyone panics again and is about to run outside. The minister defies the general panic and suggests cutting out and burning whatever is crawling inside the girl. She pulls out the harmful bacterium in disgust and sends it to the furnace. Next, the woman cauterizes the open wound on her leg, causing the girl to involuntarily scream. Despite the specific nature of the operation, it is successful and the camper survives. On their way, Yannick skeptically speculates that the girl cannot be saved and that their efforts are in vain. This infuriates Tanya, who is still reeling from the death of her unborn child. Seizing the moment, Falk intends to sneak away, but Yannick immediately catches him at gunpoint. The minister's group is drinking and celebrating the successful operation. Suddenly someone starts desperately knocking on the door and asks to be let in. Harold opens the deadbolt and the photographer, infected by a hybrid mosquito, bursts into the station, his face covered with ghastly blisters. He runs from person to person in despair, asking for help. More insects begin to hatch from his head, and the station is in chaos. 
Harold accidentally sets his hand on fire and instantly catches fire. He runs outside in a panic and the minister locks the door inside, desperately trying to come up with a new plan of action. They reach the weather station, but don't find Birtha there. Falk pretends to check the station, while he gives vent to his emotions, remembering what he has done. Finding a gun on the floor, he puts it in his pocket. The trio decides to check the red cave and finds the mutilated body of the scientist inside. Suddenly, Falk points a gun at the couple and orders them to give him the gun. Tanya tries to outsmart the scientist, but he strikes her in the eye with his buttstock. The girl falls to the ground and screams in pain, and Falk threatens the unarmed Yannick with his gun. A monster appears out of the darkness and attacks the scientist. Out of surprise, he shoots into the air and the cave is illuminated by a bright flash of light from the signal fire. The hybrid fox and spider tears into Falk's body, devouring all of his insides. The mutant switches its attention to Tanya and Yannick and they are forced to flee. The creature catches up with the technician and tries to get to his insides, but Tanya plunges a rock hammer into his carcass. Joining forces, the pair finish off the mutant and embrace. Under Birtha's body, they find a phone, which they use to call for help. Noticing a column of smoke at the main base, they rush to the others. There they learn that the girl did not make it through the nightmare night. The life-saving sound of a helicopter is heard in the air and the minister's group happily runs towards it. Tanya enters Yannick's cabin and discovers they're an ugly little hybrid of a dog and a man. Realizing what is happening, Yannick wants to destroy the creepy creature, but his girlfriend stops him. She takes the mutant in her arms and makes it clear with one look that she intends to take him with her. The exhausted company evacuates the research station. As the helicopter gains altitude, Tanya and Yannick notice that another huge glacier has turned red. The pair hear the quiet whimpering of the little mutant in the backpack and look around frightened, fearful of what lies ahead. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.